My name's Guy Elson. I've been travelling to some of the world's most remote fisheries, experiencing the best adventure angling this planet has to offer. I've witnessed beautiful cultures, breathtaking scenery and rich fishing grounds. I believe there's only one way to truly experience this, and that's travelling with a rod and a rucksack. Travelling as a backpacker on a tight budget, I've come to Costa Rica to fish for one of the world's truly giant pescatorial species, tarpon. This is my target, a fish as big as a motorbike that gorges itself on small bait fish and is found in the warm shallow coastal waters of the Caribbean. The Republic of Costa Rica is located between North and South America and borders Panama. To its west lies the Pacific and to its east lies the Caribbean. Costa Rica literally translates as rich coast and is famed for its abundant wildlife. An astounding 5% of the world's biodiversity is found in this small country. A quarter of its landmass is protected by national parks and reserves, and it's got rid of its army and focused its attentions on providing free education to university level for all of its citizens. After arriving in Costa Rica's capital, San Jose, our mission to catch the mighty tarpon entails a 200 mile journey across the country to the port of Zapote and the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea. Tarmac soon gives way to dirt roads to the ranch land of Costa Rica's lush interior. Once it was tropical jungle and even today you must be prepared for extreme weather. Oh. Well, it looks pretty much like the heavens are going to open up <laughs> seriously in a second. So yeah, we're just putting a tarpaulin on to stop everything getting completely sodden. As rains descend, I start to smell the Caribbean Sea. We're nearly at the end of civilization. From here, it's just fishing villages and hopefully fish. These guys have just got loads of um, shrimps, which they're going to take back to town, I guess. Um, so this is where we get onto the boat. Our final leg of the trip. As I approach my destination, I'm filled with fear and excitement about tackling one of the world's truly giant fish that lurk within the waters of this remote estuary, tarpon. These prehistoric fish can grow in excess of 300 pounds in weight, about as heavy as a rugby player, and predate exclusively on the plentiful bait fish found in and around the coastal waters of these rivers. As spider monkeys survey me from the safety of the jungle canopy, I feel uneasy about the task at hand. Alien sounds and smells are intoxicating as I enter the trunk of the Rio Colorado, drawing ever closer to the ocean base camp of the Baradell, Colorado, the place I will call home for the next few days. After three hours traveling down river, I arrive at the Baradell, Colorado, and my guide Palico is at the dockside. He's an expert tarpon fisherman whose grasp of the English language is rivaled only by my pigeon Spanish. <laughs> Running hundreds of kilometers inland from Lake Nicaragua, the Rio Colorado divides the village into the north and south Barra. Life here seems to be simple and laid back, with ticos and ticas of all ages helping out with everyday chores, fishing being central to their lives. There are few signs of communication with the outside world and the runway and houses here back into dense jungle. This really is my kind of town. Rising with the dawn, I'm up early with Palico to check my gear and practice casting from the shore. Today, in preparation for tarpon, we're going to start fishing for the smaller Crevalli Jack, a good way to dip your toe in foreign waters and get used to fishing with a guide. Um, I think we've got a jack, he's saying. Um, but to be honest, we've got to get that line off because it can, it's like nylon against nylon. OK. Well, the first thing is, we haven't, we've definitely hooked it, <laughs> which is a good thing. Crevalli Jack, also known as Karanax Hippos, are a prized local game fish. They're very hard fighting and great for the table. Oh, we've got a second one on. We've got another fish on as well, I didn't realise. 
Okay, then this is a double header. <laughs> That's a beautiful fish, honestly. These are lovely. As you can see, I'm a bit uncomfortable with this side of the rod. I'm not used to using these right-handed reels. But we'll get through it. Oh. So this is it. Um, gorgeous colour as well. This is really what uh, backpack fishing is all about. Fish like this just make your day. <laughs> Oh, you've got to come and try it. In contrast, tarpon are not considered edible and therefore usually released. But returning to dock, I'm in for a nasty surprise. Uh, the, there's a bunch of German guys here who've um, basically been fishing today and they've uh, hooked uh, a tarpon. And it's a monster, this one. I mean, you can see it's. I'm six foot two and it's what. Seven, seven and a half foot, maybe. Eight foot. It's huge. That's what we're trying to catch, anyway. <laughs> the tarpon is the real king of these seas. It has no real predators. Abundant food here allows it to grow to such a massive size, and up against the fishermen, it's a true warrior. Rolling, leaping, and diving to escape capture. It's the beast I'm after now, and I hope I'm ready for it. It's the afternoon. We've been out for maybe... Oh, yeah. Oh, bollocks. Come on. Balls. Yeah. Yeah. Should I hit it, hit it, hit it, keep on hitting it? There's so many fish moving, I'm sure I'll hook one, but like a divine comedy, I'm failing every time in spectacular style. With every fish missed, oh, I'm feeling my temper starting to fray. Oh, I'm no. now at boiling point. No! Balls! <laughs> it's bent the hook out a bit as well. I'm feeling a bit beaten, to be honest. Oh, that sounds... I feel like a bit of a, a child. But, um, you know, like I've done everything which I can do to try and hook these fish. And consistently we've managed to lose every single one. <laughs> I'm disappointed with myself and really concerned whether I'll be able to catch one. Hooking tarpon is going to be far harder than I ever thought. Time for a couple of stiff Cuba Libras before checking out the local nightlife. Right, it's really exciting this evening. Um, we've been given permission to go and film uh, turtles on the beach. I begin my journey upstream with my guide to a local farmer's house who's promised to point me in the direction of turtles. So we've um, just come off the main river and we've just come to this guy's house. My name is Guy. What's your name? Marine. 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 So this is Marine and this is his house. Marine insists I have a quick drink. He tells me about monster tarpon that he's caught over the years, some he says over 300 pounds in weight. It turns out Marine is now a coconut farmer. Picking his crop on a regular basis, he spends most of his days in 30 plus degrees, simply peeling the husks off hundreds of coconuts to ready them for market. So um, I just asked what this tool was for inside his house. Mm. It looks a bit like a, a chunky spear. That's <laughs> the only way to explain it. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just going to find out. So, I mean, it's, it's basic, but it's comfortable, you know. Um, and it's surprising, this. outside we turn the lights on and mosquitoes swarm. And in here it seems to be 
they know not to come in. It's such a treat to see how some of the locals live. Marine has given my guide the perfect directions to the turtles. I'm on the edge of my seat. We're coming down a channel which is probably only twice as wide as this boat. Um, and it's probably no deeper than two feet. So um, our guide is at the front of the boat just oaring us off the, the mud banks and stopping us hitting the sides. I'm told that the location we're heading to is one of the most pristine and untouched turtle nesting grounds on the planet. Greenbacks, leatherbacks and loggerhead turtles visit these beaches to lay their eggs. Most of these ancient animals travel thousands of miles to the exact spot where they are born. Many of the newborn turtles will fall prey to tarpon waiting just outside the surf on their journey from the beach to the deep blue. So this is what we're looking for. As you can see, this is the turtle track. This is its shell coming up here and its fins coming either side. And they go right up onto the top of the beach to lay their eggs. We've been walking up and down the beach for hours and we've just found one. It's a beautiful greenback. It's probably just come up to lay its eggs. Now it's going back down to the beach. This is one of the most amazing sights you'll ever see. Absolutely beautiful. Amongst the other turtles, greenbacks were nearly extinct in this area. They're now a protected species here in Costa Rica and many other parts of the world. What a truly amazing experience. It's made the trip, absolutely made the trip. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> It's a long trek back to camp, but under a blanket of stars, I'm given time to reflect on this wonder of nature. So it's been a, a long and eventful day today. Um, well, the worst part of it was I lost uh, two tarpon. The highlight of it was um, we filmed a greenback turtle on the beach uh, tonight, and it was an amazing experience. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I'm knackered now. I'm really knackered, so I'm going to bed. That night, I dreamt of tarpon. There's none of the other boats out here. It's really nice and quiet. So I feel quite confident. OK, our guide's in. That's quick. God, that's quick. Surprisingly enough, um, we're actually being towed by this fish quite a long way out into the ocean. Um, because we're neutrally buoyant on this boat, he can actually quite happily tow us around, which is kind of good as well, ties him out. So when you hook these fish, it's uh, very much like hooking into a lump of concrete. Um, you really, for anybody who's ever fished, it feels like you've just snagged the bottom. <laughs> and then generally it's followed by some pretty impressive aerobatics. I'm so glad it's not full intensity sun at the moment. This is hot work. That's it, it's out. <laughs> That's all it takes. One jump, he's gone. <laughs> it lies the culprit. <laughs> not many fish can um, bend out hooks quite like top one. <laughs> Oh well. With my confidence growing, I'm going to experiment a bit. I'm going to fly fish for tarpon. <laughs> okay, we've just hooked a tarpon on the fly rod. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. I've always wanted to catch one on the fly rod. But there was a big problem. To my absolute horror, I see the line is wrapping around the reel handle. The backing line is like cheese wire and has to be handled very carefully in situations like this. If I'm not extremely careful, I can lose a finger. Oh, I'm going to snap it. What's happened here? What's happened? Other way, mate. Other way. Oh, it's gone. 
the life of me, I don't understand this, but the, the backing wrapped around the, the spool somehow and I couldn't release any more line and the tarpon jumped a few more times, snapped the line straight out because I couldn't, I couldn't give it pay out any more line. And it was a really big tarpon and that would have been my first one on the fly. Just gutted. Re-energised from a rest on dry land, I'm going back out with fresh determination. Failure is not an option. We're the first boat out and feeling quite confident actually. We've just got, we've just scored a load of fresh fish off uh, one of the local boats and um, we're wearing sensible clothes now so we're not going to get burnt. Um, in fact, we've brought a, a little umbrella out with us, which is going to look quite amusing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm feeling it now. I think we're going to hook. We're going to get one. Yeah? Please don't let it throw the hook. Okay, we've hooked into a tarpon. Oh, I'm very excited, but I'm also just, we've lost so many of these. I just, I would hate it if we lost this. I, I mean, I'd re I really, really hope we get this one. Oh no. And here we are. Can we get him up? Up onto the boat. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. Now, this is an upside down tarpon, which weighs. This is rod in a rucksack. <laughs> oh, I'm back in. Oh, I'm covered in slime. <laughs> okay, I can't believe this, but um, we've literally, we've only just released the other one and we've just hooked up on another one. This is phenomenal. And after me not being able to hook any of these fish, I've hooked two in a row. I feel like I've turned a corner in my fishing, but I'm not going to speak to you soon. I can't believe my luck. I'm now solidly locked in battle with my second tarpon in a row. What are the chances? Tarpon are locally known as Sabalos. During the months of September and October, they congregate en masse outside the river mouths here. You wouldn't want to be a small fish during these periods. Pound for pound, tarpon are considered to be the hardest fighting fish in the ocean, which is why they're so highly prized by sports fishermen throughout the tropics. I'm exhausted, but I can't rest. I must get it aboard the boat. And we've hooked it. That's what it's all about. <laughs> oh, God. Best fit.